any of the arms today when he's one of the uh, eminent pipe rack manufacturers. It's probably one of the best racks around. It's based on a magnetic you know, ball principle. You put the ball within the pipe and then put it on a magnetic base. And voila, basically a pipe of home in case it's good firm. Uh, functional, beautiful, and uh, extremely well made. Uh, what more can you ask for? But actually, got to ask for more themselves. So they're beautiful racks. How long have you been carving? These are. This is five years into this. I'm originally a wood sculptor. Okay. And the whole idea was simply this: in a world of high-end, beautifully designed artisan pipes, <laughs> you need to have a piece to design it a parody with that level of design. Yes. Putting a simple rack together, made in India might be okay for your old everyday pipes but for those really high-end artisan pipes they need a backdrop that complements their beauty and that was just simply the idea behind it very cool and everything evolved out of that oh nice do you smoke yourself i i am a pipe smoker and a cigar smoker and a cigarette <laughs> okay <laughs> um but that was it my friends are all pipe carvers uh -huh. i love their work I just wanted to provide them with something to display with it. And the funny thing about this is, a large portion of my business is with trade. Making displays for other pipe carvers instead of my friends. Oh, very cool. And you can tell by looking at your work that you're actually a pipe smoker yourself, because sometimes when things are designed, it's by somebody who doesn't do it themselves, so it becomes impractical. Well, what I, the way we go about this is, if a, a friend of mine has a couple of pipes they want to do as a presentation piece, and they want a really nice single, They'll send me a picture of the pipe, mm -hmm. and at that point, just make me something that will display that pipe. And I just found it very easy that since I love the pipe, yeah. it's easy for me to design around it. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. But these look like they are meant to display multiple pipes. Oh yeah, of course. Some of them are much larger than others. Oh. How, large are your, how large are your largest racks? They hold how many pipes? I, I do up to 18 or 20 in the high-end exotic look. Yeah. And then I can do even layered in a more conventional rack. But um, in the American market, doing multiple pipe stands is very, very attractive. Mm -hmm. yeah. People, people want to put up as many as they can. Yeah. It's an American way. It's the way we do things. But more is always better, and it works here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I like to keep it to about seven. Okay. And I don't like to jam the pipes. I like them spaced out. I like them seen. On these, I really do keep in mind that I'm displaying handcrafted artisan pipes. Yeah, yeah. And sure. with some of your pipes, you need a lot of space. Oh yes. oh, yes. I was going to say, the types of wood you use, you basically, it seems like, work with an array of about five or six different woods. Actually, I work with 75 different woods. It's all hand-selected. We do mill our own barrel. Oh, wow. Uh, it's nothing for me to go through 75 sample pieces, select one or two to use. I, this all starts with buying good wood. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then the way I go about the design is I, I take a piece of wood, mm -hmm. and that wood is as much part of the design process as I am. I don't fight with the grain. If I want something, but the wood wants to give me more or less, the wood will always win the design process. Yeah. You can't really fight with the... Um well, it's like making a pipe. You go with the grain, not against it. I was going to say, there was a funny story. I had mistaken this yesterday for a hedgehog, one of my favorite creatures. Uh -huh. Neil told me that this was a sea urchin. It's a tiger fish. Oh, a tiger fish. Okay, yeah. sorry. But tell him the philosophy that your father taught you when you create pieces like this. Yeah. There's a lot of what I have out here that comes as a result of being some overture for different design. Mm -hmm. There was a expression my father used to have in, this, in the shop, throw away nothing. <laughs> so if, right. I, if I had something that's hanging over, all of a sudden I could see something. Uh -huh. These were the ends of another laminate that I did, and I turned it into a, uh -huh. some kind of sea creature. I think it looks like a tiger fish. Okay. But you'll see this in a lot of my pieces, mm -hmm. where I put together a two-piece combination series here. Oh, yeah. That was part of the, what, that was Ulrich from, the base of this thing. Ah! Oh. So now it's a, technically you could buy all three and it'd be like a really cool set. Yeah, and I like to do that. I like to offer one or two pieces complement each other to place out. It yeah, doesn't yeah. have to be a straight presentation. Yeah, I yeah. like the multiple types of look. Yeah, yeah. 
That's such a vast array of these, good lord. Yeah. You really, it's a flavor of love. Yes, yes. very cool. No, but I was going to say that in Neil's work, you're going to see that the pieces are beautiful mm -hmm. and practical and extremely well made. Yes. You have some things that basically look good from afar, but they're far from good. Then you have things that are functional, yet they're unattractive. He manages in his work to combine form and function. Yeah, a true you designer. Know, aesthetics and functionality, that's right. So, basically a rare combination from a very talented men. Mm -hmm. Definitely a plus to the industry. I acquired one of his racks, unfortunately it's packed away, but I'll be able to show it perhaps in a later video. Yes. Style and substance, form and form, yeah, I think he was about yes. He's also a great guy, by yeah. the way. By the way. <laughs> Thank you for the interview. Pleasure.